click the links for Odyssey and um, BitChute. Avoid the Discord as it is cancer. Is criticism allowed post-2020 riots? Can there be peace between Comicsgate and the SJWs? Is it time to welcome Gail Simone into Comicsgate? So I was reading, uh, this is uh, Savage, no, Space Bastards, which is one of the only good mainstream comics I'm aware of, and unfortunately it's by Humanoids, which is very, very weird. Uh, But I had a thought. If this is one of the only good stories out there, then the industry is in deep, deep trouble. And there's no magic economy of supply and demand. It's sales shrink, then salaries have to shrink, right? Eventually, people who are thinking about going into comics have to kind of reassess themselves and go into something else. Or people who are already in it, but they're not really getting enough work, they've got to leave it and do something indie or just do something something else entirely. And let me just float a trial balloon. Maybe some of them should start taking the rounds of Comicsgate. You know, drinking tea and having uh, biscuits. Obviously, the big guys are not worried. But the mid-level people, um, who are, or people who are trying to get into it, now is definitely the wrong time for mainstream comics. Even before the Wu flu. And it feels like before the Wu flu, they were a little bit more cocky. And then that came along, and it just knocked... I don't know, reality kind of knocked uh, knocked in the door. Uh, comics is already shrinking. And as it shrinks, the infrastructure shrinks. And then it's kind of a self-perpetuating cycle. So say you're a mid-range guy. You're not ready to retire. You enjoy making art, telling stories, and getting paid for it. You saw what happened when Gail Simone uh, went out and she tried the YouTube route. She made four videos and she realized that it's kind of a pain in the ass to make videos, and then she gave up. And, like, your first four videos, you're still trying to figure out, I don't know, like, sound levels and stuff like that. Plus, she had this weird habit of talking to her audience like they were little kids, and she's not old enough to talk like that, which is really weird. She's kind of young, and she still talks like, I don't know, a grandmother from 100 years ago. And she gets roasted in the comments. The comments are very much worth reading. But getting roasted in the comments, um, as I just got roasted tonight by um, someone, uh, it's just a, that's just a natural part of the fun of YouTube. Getting called a bundle of sticks and told to delete oneself. you got to just laugh it off and keep going or dry the tears and, and move on, whatever. You don't quit after four videos. Now, say you're in comics, but... <laughs> At EVS was roasting me in the last video. If you want to read his comments, they're kind of funny. Now, say you're in comics, um, but it's more like a part-time gig in terms of uh, monetary recompense. Before Trump derangement syndrome made the left absolutely insane, these artists and writers could come talk to us, or bigger channels. But believe it or not, people on opposite sides of an issue used to be able to talk to each other, sit down, have a glass of wine, smoke a joint, whatever. The left started to get very weird under George Bush, but then under Trump, probably because of the technological social media environment. Social media, I think cultural anthropologists are going to be doing PhDs on the effect of social media and how it led to, I don't know, Civil War Part Two, <laughs> World War Three. Am I being hyperbolic? Probably not, unfortunately. Probably not. I mean, so after, what did they say? Like after the the, 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 the atomic war, then they'll be fought with sticks and stones. Um, so they, after Trump, they just, they lost their effing minds. Their, their brains, like they're never going to recover post-Trump. Anyway, the idea of these people making the rounds of live streams on Comics Gate is pretty far-fetched. The phrase is that the left thinks the right is evil and that the right thinks the left is simply wrong or misinformed on these issues. Now, some of these Twitter anti gay people are totally committed to the bit that they have blown up over the past four years that Comicsgate is evil and Trump and something, something, something. If they're thinking maybe it's the time to do a crowdfunded project, they're going to find out that Twitter is not very good for marketing. They have a lot of soft subs, soft support on Twitter. And here's the thing about the far left on Twitter. People don't like them. They're not likable, and they're really not trustworthy. So, I mean, they will always sell each other out for a quick uh, dopamine boost. 
it turns out that there's not actually a whole lot of support for left-wing projects. People will retweet a bunch of stuff, but rarely are they going to go buy a Mags Visaggio or a Gail Simone book, because neither one of them can write. Um, they can write, but it's like they choose not to. They choose. If you can't write without grinding an axe about how much they hate their dads or the dads they didn't have, then just stop it. Just stop it. Move on. Twitter followers for SJWs don't correlate to increased sales. YouTube is the much better platform in terms of marketing. People go to Twitter for dopamine. They engage with a tweet for like a few seconds. They just want to scroll, click, click the like, and get those dopamine hits. They're not, they're not giving it like deep thought, and they don't usually want to leave, click the links to leave the platform because they're in the middle of that dopamine rush. People go to YouTube for like 10-minute videos or longer. On a video, you get to know the bigger picture of the person and the issue, which is usually kind of important when you're being asked to spend $35 or whatever. A lot of the left-wingers have this problem uh, making videos because they're not allowed to talk about anything. They are constrained by a social pressure from their peer group that they have to seek a consensus so they won't get ostracized. They are grazing herd animals who feel safer in the center of the herd, where people on the right are more like cats in a bag who constantly fight each other for no reason at all. Or they get coked up at conventions and bang lady boys. Drink and Draw is on YouTube. They do live streams. And it is the most gosh awful thing. I said gosh because it's Sunday. You have ever seen. They do. They drink and draw. And they talk about nothing. Absolutely nothing for 90 minutes. Like You can watch it and you won't even be able to get through it. Because they're not allowed to talk about how crappy comics are. They can't even talk about movies because Marvel, DC, Disney, they're all interconnected. One's owned by a subsidiary or another or partially invested by someone who's... You get the idea. Uh, so if something comes up, they have to be neutral. Uh, because the Twitter commie kids pick sides with movies. So with like Star Wars, which is a good example, that was their film. It had a female lead, so they couldn't take any criticism of it. And obviously the films were garbage. So Drink and Draw ends up saying the most milk toast takes on everything. Where Comics Gate is free to laugh at stupid movies, comics, even Comics Gate comics. Some of which are cringe. Most I will say are excellent. And even some of like the first timers are very good first time projects. But to be fair, you can go take a look at Stealing Solo. It's horrible. And in the guy's defense, it's a learning experience for him, and I'm, I'm sure the next version is going to be great. He seems like a nice guy. He seems like a good guy who just got in over his head, so you got to be kind of uh, you know fair to people on their first shot. Um, but the point is, at least we can say it. Uh, my point is also that the hostile work environment of the mainstream is not going to allow for any dissent. At some point, if you're in the mainstream, there might be a tipping point where it'll be more profitable to go into indies rather than to keep trying to make it in the mainstream and hope the industry as a whole improves. I don't see how it could. And if they're a hardcore SJW, then they are probably beyond saving. But if there are some more moderate voices out there who just want to make fun, old-fashioned stories, like, you know, I was thinking, uh, when, when were the best comics? Pre-1990s? That was 20 years ago. It was a long time of, yeah, okay, so there was some good stuff after that. But, like, I feel confident in saying before 1990s, you were going to find a whole bunch of solid stories. That was a long time ago to like to get substantially worse in those 20 years, especially in the past 10 years. Um, so if these people just want to make those old kind of fashion stories of like escapist fiction, escapist stories, uh, then they should get on YouTube and establish a footprint. If they're moderate or even, I don't know, some SJW tendencies, if they want to talk, I'm sure a lot of us would talk to them. If they want to make their own version of Comicsgate, and like I said, it'll be tough because they are such boring, miserable people, making videos means you've got to be free to talk about things without getting prior approval from your masters. If you're not free to shitpost, then you're not free. 
If some of these mainstream people who aren't getting enough work want to form their own network, they're going to have to wash a lot of the brainwashing off. If they think uh, Finn sucked in Star Wars and the horse-faced girl was a Mary Sue and the shovel-faced girl was horrible, they need to just say it. They live in this constant fear of getting canceled by other SGWs. We are more free in that we are already canceled, which is why it's so sad to see so much infighting. But I got into that in the last video, so I'll just skip that. Um, it seems like all these different factions could just put aside all their petty differences and act like mature adults. And because, let me make an obvious point here, a movement or market needs to grow. You don't want more creators if you're looking to maximize profit. You want to grow the audience. If it wasn't for all the petty bickering, Comicsgate could have been ten times the size it is now. Comicsgate has some legitimate talent. Doug Tenapel, EVS, Mike uh, Malin, Myers. And there are also a lot of talented up-and-comers like Douglas Ernst, Clint Stoker, and Tug. And it's not going anywhere as long as YouTube allows the content. And when you compare it to the mainstream, Comicsgate is amazing. It's way, way better. Uh, and I'm not just saying that to be nice, because I'm not nice. Comicsgate is better than the mainstream. There are There's like a half a dozen stories that I would put up against anything. And, and Richard Myers, he should be amazingly proud of those the two uh, Iron Sights and, um, and Jawbreakers. I mean, even though he's a first-time guy, but even if he wasn't a first-time guy, he should still be proud of those works. Those are, those are amazing, amazing uh, stories. Um, anyway, um, the mainstream stuff is so embarrassingly bad and getting worse that it kind of makes it easier for Comics Gate to have a market. Comics post the 2020 uh, BLM riots are going to be nonstop uh, breastless transsexual POC lesbians fighting Nazis. But that doesn't sell that well, so it's going to continue to shrink, which is going to force people out. And the social media environment for them is, say that James Bond comic by Vita Ayala? It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's written by what seems to be an alcoholic child. But if you're on the left, you can't say that. It's just understood that one is not allowed to criticize a walk, a POC, or anyone in the BLT. It means that you're not one of us. You're not following the script. Because only the toxic man-baby chads criticize purse puppies. Which begs the question, what if Kelly, Sue, DeConnick, uh, Mags, Kwanzaa really are horrible? Isn't one free to criticize their work? No, the simple answer is no. One is not allowed to criticize a purse puppy post-2020 riots. Or one is an incel, man-baby, toxic, problematic uh, chad. Which makes me wonder, why is someone's sexual status some suddenly become uh, probative, relevant, and acceptable to uh, debate when they're on the opposite side. You can't call Heather Antos a cum dumpster, but if somebody doesn't like a movie, then they're an incel? What's the difference between being a diseased, filthy whore and a chaste, pure, clean vessel? Isn't it better not to be a filthy cum dumpster? I, I for one, am not a filthy whore. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, guys, and I will see you all next episode.